Noita is such an unforgiving game that new players will often give up before they really start to enjoy it. My goal for this video is to pack as many helpful tips as I can into a less than 5 minute video and help new players understand this awesome game. This guide is separated into two main parts, general tips and wand building. Once you've mastered both of these aspects, you'll finally be on your way to dominating your runs and becoming a Noita god. This is a guide for complete beginners of the game, so if you have a lot of hours, then you probably won't learn anything new. I'm Jay from Keyboard Gaming, and this is how to play Noita in 5 minutes or less. The game has 7 biomes to go through before you defeat the final boss. At the end of each main biome, there's a portal that leads to a safe zone between each area called the Holy Mountain. In the Holy Mountain, you can actually edit your wands, which I'll go into detail about later on. At the start of each Holy Mountain, there's a heart pickup that refills your health, and a green pickup that will refresh all consumable spells. Next, there's a shop where you can either buy wands or spells, and that's random every time. Lastly, there's a perk pickup with a reroll machine. These three perks are random, and rerolling costs gold, and that gold cost doubles with each reroll. If anything destroys a part of the holy mountain, whether by accident or on purpose, the gods will be angered and a really powerful enemy will spawn in the holy mountain. If you step in any sort of liquid, that liquid will stain your character and you'll see the icon above your head. Every liquid has a different effect. Water doesn't do anything except for wash away other stains, oil makes you slippery and more flammable, blood makes you do more critical hits, and anything toxic will harm you over time. Fire also acts as a sort of status effect, but it can be put out by spraying another liquid on you, preferably water. You always start with a random flask of liquid, though you really should try to pour it out and find water to put in it. You can right click a flask in your inventory to drink it, aim your mouse and left click to pour it out, and aim and right click to throw the entire flask. When you want to fill a flask, you first need an empty or semi-empty flask, and you need to stand in the liquid you want to put in it. Liquids can be mixed with other liquids to create new liquids that are either useful or more dangerous. The most dangerous thing to worry about is always the enemies. Every enemy has its own attack patterns, and the best thing is to simply learn the way they attack so you can dodge them better. Now I'm going to get into the harder topic which is wand building. The first important stat to know is about the shuffle stat. If the wand says no shuffle, it'll cast the spells on the wand from left to right. If a wand says yes on the shuffle stat, it'll cast spells at random until all the spells on the wand have been used, and then it resets and casts them in another random order. Having a wand that shuffles is not good for wand building. Sometimes you can find a good combination, but you should never put anything dangerous on a shuffle wand. Some wands will cast more than one spell at a time, which is indicated by the spells per cast. Cast delay is the time it'll take to cast per one click. Once all the spells on the wand have been cast, the wand will recharge, which is indicated by the recharge time stat. Every spell has a mana cost, and every wand has a different mana max and recharge speed. The further you go into the world, the more likely you are to find wands with low recharge speeds and high mana. If the wand can't handle the mana for the cost of spells you have, it simply won't cast the spells. The chainsaw spell is one of the most useful spells in the game, since it has a low mana cost and it completely removes cast delay and reduces the recharge time. There's a rare modifier that can be found called Always Cast, which means a wand will always cast that spell regardless of how much mana it has. Sometimes you can find some crazy always cast wands like healing spells, and finding those are very beneficial. If you ever get confused as to what spells are being cast, you can look above the shop and it'll show you exactly what's happening. Also, a great way to test the damage of your wand is to shoot the statues in the Holy Mountain, but be careful when using any destructive spells in there. By default, there are close to 400 spells that need to be unlocked. Every spell is unlocked by a different method, but the easiest way to get a few is to find the hidden orbs around the world. There are also a ton of hidden quests to do that will unlock multiple spells each time you finish them. They're extremely well hidden though, so if you don't mind spoilers then you should look up how to do them on either the wiki or on YouTube. And that's how you play Noita in 5 minutes or less. I know this was extremely basic and rapid fire, but eventually I want to make a long video on wand building and more advanced strategies. There were also a couple of other Noita videos I made in the past, so you should definitely check those out if you want to learn more. If this video was helpful, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.